Hello, it's time for another Blender tutorial again. Today I'm going to be having a quick experiment. I didn't try this technique out before I did it, uh, before before now, so... Um, sorry if um, things are not as good as they could maybe be. Um, but I'm going to have a look at making a fence specifically a fence that we can bend and will generate at least semi-procedurally okay so what we want to do is we want to make a base mesh for the model so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with this cube go into side view and scale it down a bit <clears throat> and I'm gonna add a loop cut along the top and a loop cut on the side. Okay, that's good. So I'm going to take the middle four faces along the top and along the bottom and I'm going to extrude those and then I'm going to scale them in on everything but the Z axis. And then I'm going to go and select the top ones and go W, no I'm not, I'm going to go space and I'm just going to search up to sphere now that's not working quite properly because I have the middle vert selected okay that's better I'm going to do the same for the bottom. Okay, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this whole thing here and I'm going to duplicate it. I'm just going to make a duplicate of those verts and they're going to be down a little bit. Now I'm not going to focus on the accuracy of this right now. This is just going to be the basic edge flow and how it's working. So I'm going to clear out the faces from the top and the bottom of uh, those two things. So we just have two edge loops there that we can go and bridge. So I'm going to select both of those and bridge them. There we go, that's worked quite nicely. So next I'm going to quickly make an extrusion along the top and at the bottom. Okay, that's fine. Um, then maybe just to add a little bit of variety into this, I'm going to add a little twist at the top. by adding some ring cuts, ticking on proportional editing, and rotating it on the x-axis. So I can add just a little bit of variety. Not too much. But enough so the scene isn't boring and I know I said I wasn't going to make this about aesthetic so much but I am going to scale 
these in a little bit just to make something that's a bit thinner there okay that's fine so now I'm gonna go into front view and then over to side view and I'm just gonna clear out these faces so I have holes Okay, that's good. Um, maybe take these and bring them in a little bit. And do the same on the other side. Okay, so we've got the basis of our fence here. And this is what we're going to use to repeat along. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add an array. And just give it a few. Iterations. Bring that along, bring it up a little bit, scale it down. Maybe bring it up so it's on the ground plane. And I'm just going to make sure that merge is ticked. So with this, there's a couple of things that we can control right off the bat. If we tab in, um, by taking all of the top vertices we can control the height of our fence and if we take these four verts here we can control the spacing which is kind of useful and then after we've done that we're going to go in and we're going to add a curve modifier and we're going to curve or add a curve and let's just add a circle and scale this up some so we're going to look at how we can quickly go about making our fence round um, the size of the circle is going to affect some stuff but that's okay. Um, and the number of iterations in our modifier is also going to affect how things are working. But if we tab out into perspective mode, we can see that's working quite well already. But if we get rid of that, we can do something a little bit more interesting which is we can add a Bezier curve and if we just grab this vert and move it over to the end of the fence here and three vertex and grab that vertex and move it over here we can then use this curve as our deformer. So we can go to Bezier curve and then there are some things we can move around. And if you do it this way, you can get a really, really good precise shape to the way the fence goes. And if you wanted to extrude it out some and just really tweak those until you have the shape that you want. Um, And always of course add more iterations and if we tab in 
we can of course smooth out these splines so they work nicely. And if you're careful in the tweaking, which you always should be, you can build up very quickly quite a nice fence shape that will be in exactly the um, dimensions that you require. And of course, because this is kind of halfway to rigged almost, I wouldn't call it a rig per se, but it has some of the features. If you want to go ahead and make the fence shorter, you can. Or if you want to add some loop cuts into here, wait. If we extrude these and No, that didn't work so well. Um, if we extrude those, and that's why, disable. If we disable proportional editing, and oh, I'm making a mess of this. Okay, do it properly this time. So if we move these down and extrude them over, extrude them and move them over, and add some loop cuts if we add one, two, three, four, five loop cuts over here, and one, two, three, four, five loop cuts. Uh, Five loop cuts over here and tab out. We can just see that in some of the more harshly deformed parts of the mesh, um, it gives a little bit of leeway. And we could even just go ahead and move these right in to the edge of where our kind of lengthways bit goes and we can get something a little bit better um, I'm not quite sure I like how that decal at the top is deforming bit ugly for my liking but if we for argument's sake just set the smooth go into perspective take over to cycles and just give it a really quick render we can see that we have a normals problem that does need sorting out hmm. And probably those verts need to be merged up. Um, even once this is done, we could add subdivision surface over the top. And the subsurf would stay all, well, subsurfy, which is good. Anyway, I hope this was useful to you, and um, thank you for watching.